Thank you so much for that very warm welcome to this excellent speaker show reel. But before speaking about me, allow me to thank you and your team for that fantastic job you did in really disruptive times. Thank you so much. It's a privilege to be part of that. Yes, as an entrepreneur and leader, I have acquired deep insight into company building, corporate strategy, and innovation leadership during an ongoing period of transformation and change, not only within the financial services industry. In the context of today's speaker show reel, that makes me probably more like a speaking entrepreneur and less uh, being a entrepreneurial speaker. What I share on stage, I once experienced and suffered myself. In the earlier mentioned environment of change, I do try to not search for trends and then desperately follow, but to be more of a trend setter. As a result, I had the privilege of founding two banks over the last 25 years. Maybe a third is coming up, but that would be definitely too early to tell. It is that combination of extensive practical knowledge in a regulatory environment on the one side, plus my deep understanding of technological trends such as big data, AI, blockchain, open platform, open banking, financial inclusion, the future of banking in general, with that actually made event organizers booking me as a speaker in the first place. Building those banks means building bridges, bridges between the regulated world on the one side and the fintech empowered digital innovative world on the other. Both banks I had the privilege to co-found won numerous awards, just to mention three of them. Best Banking Innovation in San Francisco back in 2013, Celent Model of the Bank Award in 2015 and 2019. World Economic Forum's Award for Young Companies in 2015, and I could go on like that. Founding those banks not only means creating a mission, vision, strategy, value proposition, go-to-market concepts, and so on. It also means to convince, and in particular means to convince shareholders, as we know, banking to be an equity-hungry business. With the first bank I founded, we issued an IPO. The second bank I founded, I did sell in a trade sale transaction. We did acquire roughly 600 million euros of capital increases. We had more than 1,500 meetings with potential investors, shareholders, supervisors, auditors, and not to forget regulators. What I talk about in my speeches are not some textbook quotes I would have collected over the last 30 years of being in this business. No, these are real life experiences. To further your understanding, I began my career in the hospitality sector. I worked in a hotel and that experience in retrospect, which has clearly shaped me as a person and my work ethic. Without those valuable years there in hospitality, I would have not been able to achieve the same. I've brought my hospitality-based expertise from a customer-centric sector to the more rational, number-based, cold-hearted world of finance. The core of my philosophy is centered around how financial services organizations can use technology to effectively engage their retail and SME customer base with innovative value-adding businesses and service ideas and models. Can you believe this? That was the revolution to be tech-centric and customer-centric in the same time. Allow me to illustrate a bit how I translate such topics into hopefully an entertaining speech. A venture cap company once invited me to do a dinner keynote at their shareholders and partner dinner. I should speak about the value proposition and my experiences at Fedora Bank. The venue was The Swan, a restaurant just next to The Globe, the very famous Shakespeare Theatre in London. Well, delivering a speech near the Shakespeare Theatre, 
you cannot ignore that very particular environment, even being German, you know? I finally decided to uh, rewrite a little bit King Hamlet by translating this tragedy into the world of financial crisis and why fintech innovation is actually the only way out. 16 rules of new banking emerged of that. Each of them written on a skull to be or not to be, of course, had to be part of that speech for the amusement of all. As a founder and CEO of Feeder Bank and the AB Bank, we had to build organizations from scratch, from team size of exactly zero employees to more than a thousand. It was that time in which I experienced how difficult it is to create a supportive corporate culture and how impossible it might be to merge two totally diverse cultures, just like the incumbent culture of a parent company on the one side with the innovation-centric culture of that subsidiary on the other. Corporate culture and leadership challenges in fast-moving and changing environments are therefore one of my favorite topics. Can I share another anecdote? I had a lot of fun in 2019 speaking at the Money 2020 in Amsterdam and with the organizers I agreed to share some of my cultural experiences out of the takeover by an incumbent company. Finally and for I don't know whatever reason together we decided that the title of the show should be is M&A the abbreviation of murder and assassination. Again, you cannot ignore such a striking topic sentence. Of course, I had to dress up accordingly. Here you see the outcome. The blood, of course, was not real, but the social media buzz about it was. In all those years, I experienced many, many political and economic crises. It was the financial crisis that started when we filed for Fedor banking license application back in 27. But we made it and we've been awarded with the license in 2009. It was the burst of the internet bubbles that hit us in the year 2000, just once we did the DAB Bank IPO. In 2003, three years later, we had been back on track of profitability. We started our JV with a Russian version of community banking when eventually the Ukraine was invaded. The sanctions made it absolutely impossible to recover and we sadly had to close. It was the Brexit referendum, just days before we've achieved our signature day for the Fedor trade sale, endangering the transaction, but we made it 10 days later. It was the COVID-19 pandemic now, in which, I'm in which I'm a proud member to various startup initiatives. All these crises did request massive discipline, self-motivation, rethinking, and not only conceptual flexibility in the same time to overcome it. Such crisis-based experience of mine was the reason for the Singaporean regulator to invite me as a speaker to the session Founders in Resilience. Students, entrepreneurs, regulators, investors had been the audience. Being a co-host of Breaking Banks podcast, allows me to share, discuss, and deliver on the previously mentioned topics in a web-based format, having thousands of listeners month by month. As you can see, digital formats are more than a normal channel and media for me, not only since the corona crisis. And let me tell you, there are even regulators speaking with licensed applicants only via video chat. There you learn to be convincing, transporting your message, defend your concept and value proposition via that very technical channel. Now, after selling my shares and stepping down as a CEO of Fido Bank, I sharpened my focus on concepts such as green finance, financial inclusion, crypto, having the potential to positively affect the lives of millions of people and correlated industries. On top, I have the honor to act as an advisor to selective regulators, for instance, I'm a member of the internationally advisory technological advisory panel to the Monetary Authority of Singapore. I act as a senior advisor to several companies and I invest 
once in a while in highly and hopefully successful startup companies. All those activities allow me to keep in touch with relevant developments in Europe, Asia, the Americas, Middle East. Now, finally, allow me to finish my speech by telling you what I find most to be important. Whenever being on stage, I want the audience to have a strong and practical takeaway. I discuss and share real life experiences and learnings rather than following a script. And I want to deliver entertainment. Some tough messages are definitely easier to digest with a smile. We all should have fun no matter what we are doing, whether it's on stage, online, wherever. Speaking about fun, I made the biggest joke of my speaker career involuntarily. In front of an audience of roughly 3,000 people, I spontaneously had to take over the moderation of a panel discussion. When introducing now my panel guests, really, I tried so hard not to make any mistake. And you can guess it happened. I introduced a very well-known Oxford sociology professor. Still, this is today a very hard word for me, sociology professor, as a professor for Babam Scientology. What an embarrassment. 3,000 people collapsing in front of me. However, we had a great discussion and a very, very good show. Now, summarizing. Yes, my origin is the service industry in general. My home turf is the financial services industry. But many of my experiences can be applied in other industries. The technology topics such as open banking, open platform, blockchain, big data, AI, crypto, security are all applicable across industry. I'm happy to share how you can increase customer engagement through digital media. I'm very happy to share how innovation leadership increases customer value and corporate valuation. The topics of corporate culture are completely cross industry. For example, when it comes to the collaboration of incumbent with innovative cultures. Last but not least, my deep experience in capital markets, corporate actions, and the acquisition of equity is a burning topic, in particular in today's volatile world. During my speaker career, I was booked for opening keynotes, sessions, well, after lunch when people are normally a bit tired, as well as dinner keynotes and larger internal team events, when, for instance, a provoking external view is needed to open up minds and horizons. Being a CEO for, well, 20 years myself, I never had an issue to deal with the C-suite of a company. Fireside chats are the outcome, for instance, or small meetings and presentations. So I do thank you for listening today and have in mind, actually, I once wrote a book, which is title is, if you do not speak about money, somebody else will do. Take care.